Mike, so Goldman is now sticking their neck out, putting a number on it, shaving off as much as 0.4 percent from first quarter GDP. What do you make of that estimate? Do you think that this could hang around for a little bit longer than perhaps initially thought? I think it's extremely difficult to guess, really, at the moment, the extent to which uh, the virus is going to impact growth. It's obviously going to depend on the extent to which it spreads uh, and the extent to which it impacts consumer confidence. We saw the consumer confidence data in the last week or so actually picking up. So the fundamentals at the moment look OK. Uh, we'll be watching the data very carefully to see, though, whether any of that changes uh, based on this outbreak. And we did just get some new updated numbers for U.S. economic growth, 2.1 percent in the fourth quarter. That was the, the slowest pace in three years. Do you think that we're heading for a bit of slower growth ahead, if not, or stabilization on the optimistic side? I'd say two good pieces of news we've seen in the last month or so. Firstly, that pickup in consumer confidence that I just mentioned, but also the non-manufacturing part of the Institute for Supply Management survey has picked up quite a bit in the last few months, reducing that risk of uh, economic slowdown uh, that was looking more of a risk three or four months ago. Uh, on the downside, we're still not seeing a material reacceleration in the conference board's leading economic indicator. Um, and you've not seen the manufacturing sector pick up. So our focus will be on the ISM manufacturing survey early next week and whether we get a further sign of pick up there and then whether that translates through into that conference board leading economic indicator actually starting to reaccelerate. It seems like trade is something that at least we're less worried about than perhaps we were before as we have maybe at least let's call it a truce at this point between the U.S. and China. But this is 2020, which means it's an election year. The Iowa caucuses are right around the corner, and it seems that polls indicate Bernie Sanders is getting um, more and more of the poll voting at the very least. Is this something that market investors should be concerned about? Because many of his policies don't seem to be things that line up necessarily with the free market capitalist way of thinking. I think what the market assumes at the moment is that were you to have uh, a candidate that perhaps has some policies that could shake the market, um, it's relatively unlikely that they would have the full backing of a Democrat Congress uh, in terms of getting the Senate and the House of Representatives and that therefore they might struggle to push through uh, some of those policies that could shake the market. So I think that assumption is what is keeping the market relatively healthy at the moment. Uh, were that assumption to be shaken, then, uh, then I think things could become a little bit more tricky. But for the moment, we think it's relatively unlikely uh, that the Democrats would take both the House and the Senate.